have in my game that, that struggled, it's been my driver, total driving. And this is really, I'm hitting a lot more fairways, I'm hitting it further and straight. A lot of confidence on the tee now, which is something I did not, I've really never had. And it, it's a nice feeling. He beat the bushes in golf's minor leagues for quite some time, always in his beloved Florida Gator van. Today, Chris DeMarco is a PGA Tour champion. And as he steps into the spotlight of this playing lesson, he does so very short of his own game. Since that first victory in 2000, the self-taught all-around athlete from New York has thrived in the sport by doing it as you were about to see, his own way. It is standard practice for Chris to not practice all that much. He would rather play, which he does frequently at Heathrow Country Club just outside Orlando, where, by the way, he is the course record holder with a nice little 60. We'll gain an understanding for Chris's familiar pre-shot routine and, as well, that very funky-looking putting grip called the claw. But first, we talk shot-making on a dog leg right par four. Well, the green's right over there. At that white house, basically. I'm just going to try to hit a 50-yard cut with a driver. I'm just going to try to aim it, you know, hit it right through here and just let it just work right around the corner. And, and then with the wind and everything, once it hits the ground, it's just going to roll to the right. Just kind of play the hole the way it's supposed to meant to be played. Try to fit the shot into the fairway this way. Really good. Perfect. All I try to do is I aim, I aim where I want the ball to start, and then basically I just try to, I open a club face up just a little bit, and then I just try to swing down the line that I want it to start. So what I'm basically doing is I'm swinging this way with just with a little bit of an open club face, which starting it down the line, but with the open club face, it's creating a left to right spin, which is just making a cut. Same thing for a draw if I'm the other way. I'll aim a little bit further right, maybe close the club face just a teeny bit, and swing out down the line and with the closed club face it's going to make the ball hook a little bit. Same with your irons? Same with the irons. A lot of times guys will get up there and they'll, they'll do something really weird. It's just so basic it's unbelievable. I mean it's just letting the, the club face be just a tad open at, at impact. Swinging down the line. That's the key. Swinging down the line. Not being afraid to, to swing down the left side and letting it cut. And you know it, it, it just sets up. I have a hard time hitting just a little bit of a cut. I like hitting the bigger cuts because I know I'm going to cut it. Um, and my nap Otherwise, you see the straight line. I try to hit pretty much a straight shot. If anything, it might just fall a little to the right. The hard shot for me is, is that same shot hooking it. That's a hard shot for me. I don't really like to play it. I have a three wood that I can do it with. So if, if it calls for that type of shot, I'll hit my three wood. And I'll do the same thing with the three wood. Chris really likes to simplify the game. He does not want a whole lot of clutter, and you will hear more about this. Now notice his posture. He kind of crouches in a position at a dress. And he maintains it throughout the move. Again, as we have seen throughout this series, consistent setup is a hallmark of good golf. Pretty basic putt here, just a little left to right and just hope the speed's right. Speed is the key to putting. So they have to have a good line and good speed, but just got a, a little bit slower Bermuda greens that, that good speed is usually the key. Again, just a little firm. Instead of thinking too much about it, you know, I mean, it's, it's a three-foot putt. The more you think about it, the more it's going to give you bad memories. I mean, I, I know that the worst thing that I can ever do on a golf course in a, in a pressure situation is have a three- or four-footer and be over there thinking about my putt instead of thinking, you know, because what happens is you start thinking about how many different ways you can miss it, unfortunately, instead of thinking the positive things. So what I do, a lot of times, if you ever see me on TV, I'll be out there, and I won't even be looking at it. It's just a three-footer. I know what it's going to do. I've already read it. And I'll just kind of go over there, and I'll just close my eyes, and I'll just visualize my children. I'll visualize my son doing something or my daughter doing something. And it just kind of takes me out of the moment for a second and, and, and gives me something positive to think about. And it's it's pretty cool because, I you know, it just kind of puts me into reality and makes it what's really, really important in life. and. You know, obviously a three-footer isn't the most important thing in life. You know, family is. So it's a, um, it's a nice way to take me out of the moment and kind of take the pressure, the, the tension out of me. And then when I step up there, I just seem a lot looser. 
the better players, um, amateur better players, that's one thing they overlook is, is, is the lie. That's the first thing I look at when I hit the ball, is I look at my lie, number one. It's the first thing when I step up and I look, first thing I see is, is my lie. And then I figure that what the wind's doing, um, and then I, I figure out which club I want to hit. And then I visualize the shot, obviously. And then I just go through my, my routine and I hit a good shot. And then afterwards, I, I look back and if it's a good shot, I collect in the memory. And if it's a bad shot, I, I think to myself, what did I do? Oh, you know what? I didn't do my lie or I, you know, I didn't make my hand. It was a little below my feet or something like that. So then I can channel it up there. So the next time I have that same situation, I, I learn from it. As long as you can learn from every shot, that's what you're looking for. 148. So I got a good lie. That's the first thing I look at. My lie is perfect. And I check the wind. Feels like it's just kind of right to left. Not really hurting. Maybe if anything, maybe hurting a teeny bit. So I'm going to try and eight iron. It's not a, a drive range. It's more of a I think it's more of a hold shot here. I'm going to try and um, cut an eight iron against the wind and hold it up instead of trying to have it work with that. Where the pin is, it's a really hard shot to. Um, if I miss it three feet right of the pin, my ball is going to roll down to the right. So. Obviously, a little left of the hole here would be good, so I'm going to try and hold this 8-iron up against the wind. What I mean by that is I'm going to try to cut it back against the wind a little bit. Almost. A lot of the, the West Coast places that we play have not so much grain, but they do have a tendency. I know that in Vegas, it goes towards the sphere downtown, and um, in the Hope, there's, it goes towards something also. I mean, everything has a, has a place where it goes, and it's just basically where the water's running off the green, and that's where the grain is. Um, on this one, obviously, that's why my ball didn't bounce forward there, it was because I, I, my, when my ball hit into the green, it hit a little bit more into the grain, which is going to create a little more spin, which is going to make the ball stop quicker. If the grain was running straight this way, my ball probably would have hopped up to up to the pin. But um, you know, obviously, you can't read grain, grain from the fairway. So you, you know, that's why in in a practice round, I would I would mark that down with my caddy. I'd say, now listen, up here, this part, this front part of the green is into the grain. So if the pin's up here, we, we need to fly it up top, or it's not going to bounce up. Just try to really um, focus on keeping my head down. I keep my head down and give it a nice solid stroke. Got my ball already lined up. Almost. What can you do? You hit a good putt again, so you know, those are ones that you had a big ridge to go up and had almost a cup and a half a break and hit the hole. That's a Pretty good putt. Next up, Chris DeMarco details the most talked about putting style of the last several years. Johnny Miller said that had he known about the claw putting grip in his day, there is no telling how much more success he would have had. Since going to the unconventional style, Chris DeMarco has found an awful lot of believers because simply put, he's become one of the premier putters in the game. Let's return you now to your playing lesson as we hear what led Chris to make the change. Well, I was always a, a very streaky putter. And what happened to me finally was that when I would, I got out there and you have a putt, a tench putt or something, and my right hand and my left hand would get so tight and they'd work not together. So there was, my right hand would want to work this way, my left hand would want to work this way. So it was very hard for me to get the putter back. And I used to hit a lot of putts like that, real short and jabby. So I was um, talking with Skip Kendall and he um, showed me the script. I'm like, you know, he's like, put your hand like this. I'm like, golly, that's weird. So I started doing, I had a putt about like this right here one day, and I, there's no way I was going to make it normal. So I said, well, let me try it. So I, I stepped in there, and I, and I put my hands on normal, where I put my right hand like this, and I just kind of, and I, it went dead middle. Low, it went straight in the middle, and I was like, wow, what a good feeling that is. And it started from about this distance, and it just gradually got further. Now I do it everywhere. Basically, it's, it's just a normal left hand. And then I just put my right hand on, very little grip pressure. I look twice, and then I hit it. Like that. And then for me, knowing I hit a good putt, 
um, if you watch what, so I mean, sometimes, like Nick Faldo can, um, can keep his head down tremendous. Like when he putts, he can go, I can't do that. I've tried, I cannot do it. It doesn't fit me, I just, I just can't do it. So I look, and so what I look at, what I look at is I look at my ball and I look at the blue line. And if my blue line's going like this, which is just a straight little piece of thread looking like my ball's rolling, I know I've hit a good putt, whether it goes in or not. So I know I, there's no way you can put a good stroke in the ball and not have the ball rolling over. And if you watch that last one, it was dead solid. So that's all I look for. I'll look at my blue line again and just... That was it. That was pretty good there. Well, not surprisingly, Chris took a fair amount of good-natured ribbing when he first showed up with the grip on tour. But guess what? As the wind started to pile up, the guys were standing in line asking Chris, how do you use this thing? And we'll have more on the call in just a moment. But first, let's get the scoop on that pre-shot routine. Right now, I got a, a four iron, and it's a good one for me to get there. If I go up on the right side of the tee box, I'm kind of hitting back into the wind since the wind's going that way. So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to ride this wind as much as I can, use the wind to my advantage. So I'm going to tee up on the left side and just try to hit it a little left of the hole and let the wind bring it in. Um, I'm just trying to hit something high. I'm going to tee it up a little bit higher than I normally would. Um, so I get the ball in the air. And also, this green is very hard, so I'm going to try to hit it high so it lands softer when it gets on the green. Should be a perfect four iron. be a hair short. My pre-shot routine for me is what I used to do is I used to get the club here which is not good. It's shut and it's outside. So what this does is it gets me in the right position a halfway back and from here you can go up and swing. From here you got to do something different to get it to where you have to be. So I usually do it twice in a tournament. When I'm playing at home in practice rounds I only do it once just to kind of get myself just so I'm doing it, but but it just takes a little bit longer. And in, in a tournament, what it really does for me, what's really helps me out a lot, is when I'm in a situation where I'm a little nervous, it makes me do my routine and it makes me slow down. And by slowing down, that's my biggest problem is, is I get quick. So by slowing down, doing it twice, when I get over it, I'm almost more, I'm a lot more relaxed, and I just go ahead and hit the ball. Three practice strokes on longer putts. Misread it a little bit. We've left ourselves about a six footer, seven footer. Line it up. It's got to go in just a hair left. This is one I can be a little more aggressive with because it's uphill, so we'll just try to a little more firmer than normal. that. When you say you putt with your left hand, what's that right hand doing? Um, if I putted with one hand, like if I took one hand and putted, it'd be really, really hard for me for the putter to, to kind of go back straight without kind of going like this all over the place. It'd be hard for the putter to go back. So basically what my right hand does is just kind of guides it. So it lets the putter go back straight. Um, it's on there just really for guide. That's about it. Um, you know, Calc and Kevin Sutherland and those guys, they putt more like that, where they actually use their right hand. Their right hand doesn't bring the putter back, but it, it, it kind of pushes through a little bit with their right hand. So for me, I had a hand that was, that was hitting, and I, what I would do is I'd break down a little bit. So now my right hand is hard for your hand to break down that way. So it just takes all the tension out of my, out of my stroke, and I'm able to stroke the ball now. Very interesting technique, and it is one that you may want to try even as a tool when you practice. Now, the putting has been critical, but when we come back, Chris will tell us what has really turned him in to a consistent force on the PGA Tour.
I'm hitting a lot more fairways, I'm hitting it further. There's no really advantage to going to the left. So for me, the worst possible mistake I can do here is hit it in the left water. Because there's no advantage, I mean, I'm, you're gonna hit a four iron from the middle of the fairway, you're gonna hit a five iron from the left side. So there's really no advantage to, to hitting the ball and trying to draw it up there and get it up there by that stake. I mean, ultimately, that's the pin. But if it was a par three and you're hitting a three wood, you know, 25, 30 feet right of the pin's not bad. And I just kind of hit it straight, but again, that's not going to hurt me. Just got a little bit longer club in. I was trying to turn it, and I just didn't turn it. I just was trying to have the ball get drawn a little bit. If it draws five yards, it's going to draw 20 in the wind, and I just kind of hit it straight. Might have got a little bit ahead of it. Which I might have got just a hair ahead of it, and the club was lagged behind it, and I might have blocked it just a hair. That was the best swing of the day. Just be enough. Oh. Again, just a teeny bit short, but rolled up there to about 20 feet, and can't be too upset with that. That was that was perfect. I cut it right against the wind. If it lands the right distance, it rolls up there real close. And again, when you're 212 with the wind blowing like it's blowing, 20 feet's not too bad. I got a birdie putt. Not the easiest birdie putt, but you know, again, a, a, I got a birdie putt, so I might as well try and make one. But from back where I was, I'm happy with this. I mean, it's a really tough pin. If you look, I got a ridge three feet left of the hole and not much room right, so not necessarily um, all that upset with the shot. Again, you know, you make a four here, you're not losing much. Obviously, I got it, you know, it's just a pretty much straight up the hill putt, so be good and aggressive with it and see if we can make one. Didn't hit it. Big slope. Again, you know, putting it up, foot and a half, and four is not a terrible score in that hole. Um, obviously, I'd like to make a three, but hitting a three iron back there to this pin, four wasn't bad. He is from Chris's home course, Heathrow Country Club, with some very valuable insight on visualization and how he uses it under pressure. It's playing a little bit easier today, but this is a good one. If I get on a, on tour and I got a tough a tough tee ball, ball I'll, I'll visualize this on tour because it's got pretty much nothing left. It's almost basically out of bounds. You're hitting over because you hit it in there, you're gonna have to go up and drop. Um, and I just I, I make myself no matter where I am when I'm playing this hole to play in a really aggressive line and just and just try to smoke it. And you know that's. It, what it does for me is I get in a situation like maybe the 18 at Memphis is a really tough tee ball and it's kind of the same way, l nothing left, and I'll just put myself on this tee ball and I'll just and I'll just visualize myself out here hitting my normal shot, and it seems to it seems to help a lot. I mean, anything you can get get yourself in a positive frame of mind on a tee box is a good thing. Um, that's probably got about 115 yards hole, so the hole's probably, I don't know, 434, so, I mean, but it's, you know, obviously this way. I, t I took off a big chunk there. Um, ever since I put this driver in the bag, I've really become a lot better driver of the golf ball. That's been my, um, if there's one thing I have in my game that, that struggled, it's been my driver, total driving, and this is really, I'm hitting a lot more fairways, I'm hitting it further and straight. A lot of confidence on the tee now, which is, something I did not, I've really never had. And it, it's a nice feeling. The more confident you are, the, the more aggressive you're gonna play, and, and the more aggressive you play, and if you're confident with it, you're gonna make a lot more birdies and you're gonna score better. So, you know, it's always believing in yourself. If you can believe in yourself, and you gotta understand there's gonna be days where, you know what, the ball's not gonna go in the hole, and you're not gonna hit your shot right at the hole, and you're not gonna do things, and you're gonna have bad rounds. But if you can make those bad rounds, 72s or 71s or 70s, you're gonna do really well.
Here I got 112 yards. My max on my sandwich, I want to say, is probably 110, but I'm downwind. The greens are, again, a little firm. This, I know this grain runs a little bit front to back, so I'm just going to try to hit a dry, a perfect sandwich is, is, is what this is for me, just a really good, solid sandwich. And this is bread and butter for me, so this should be close. it but it's still gonna get there oh stop spinning that right there was um I hit the ball a little heavy I didn't I saw it over here but I didn't bring it into my game I was on a little bit of a down slope my feet were below the ball and I should have choked up maybe just a quarter of an inch on the club um, and basically what happened was my club just caught the ground it's kind of the same thing I was telling you I just maybe needed to to choke down just a little bit just to let the club go through and I just kind of got caught. Ultimately, 98 was a big year for me because I, it was the first year putting with that grip on tour and it, was, it wasn't so much um, that I didn't believe in myself, it was another just my peers seeing me do that. And once I got over that and got comfortable and kept my card, um, it was just kind of shot off. I mean, I think that the key to the reason why I play so much better now is, is I'm a lot more comfortable on the golf course and I feel like I got a lot more experience in the golf course. Um, once you feel like you've been up there and, and you've won tournaments and then you've let some tournaments go, you feel like you've experienced it all. It's just you kind of just let it go after that. Good stuff from a guy who has really risen through the ranks and is now firmly entrenched as one of the premier professionals in this sport. Nice also to get a reality check in that three-footers do not have to be the be-all and end-all. Chris is also a prime example of finding what works for you and maybe only you, whether it is a pre-shot routine or a distinctive putting style. Bottom line, find your comfort zone, and the low scores should follow. Thanks for being with us. Good luck with your game. When I'm playing well and I'm contending for a tournament, five-footers are good. You know, and that's what really it's all about. Is it? I think the tour average, somebody said, was like 55 or 65% from five feet. So that just goes to show you, can't make them all.